youth. It's like a snake. What's up, everybody? Gary here, GBL Iguanas. Of course, you all know our sweet boy, Kevin. So today what we're doing, sorry, just checking the camera, making sure the zoom's right. We have a new camera person for today. Hold on, hold back there. So today we're talking about boas and we're gonna go more in depth on the care for how to take care of more specifically boas, um, red tail boas, common boas. So we're gonna talk about BCIs, which are the boa constrictor imperator, which are the common boas like Kevin here. And we're also gonna talk about BCCs, which are the Suriname, Peruvians, and the Guianans, which is what? Sigius. So we're gonna kind of go in depth here on their care. Um, thankfully their care is exactly the same. So it makes it super, super easy here. Uh, Kevin, oh my goodness, he's a heavy boy. So to start with it, as babies, you know, if you get a baby, they're gonna come home. They're gonna be all nice and small. You can keep them in a smaller cage in like a nice three foot cage, like with one of our black boxes here. Um, these work really well for young and baby boas. You're gonna wanna keep their hot spot, low 90s, anywhere between really like 90 to 93 works really well. Where we have our setup here, so like for Siggy, we have the thermostat with the radiant heat panel set for 91 degrees, and it works just absolutely perfectly. Whether you're gonna use that, Kevin actually has some ceramic heat emitters in here, which you can see. Maybe you can see when you go look <laughs> under there. We've got a couple of higher wattage ceramic heat emitters up there and we monitor all the temperatures to make sure. Um, so babies to adults, temperatures are gonna stay the same. Make sure you give them a nice hot spot, you know, it's a 90, 93. Ambient temperature, you know, high 70s, low 80s, works perfectly for them. And that's gonna allow them to digest their food. That's gonna allow them to thermoregulate. Who Kevin needs to thermoregulate because he is cold, holy crap. And humidity is gonna be the same for babies and adults as well, <laughs> which makes things pretty nice. Um, you know, they're a rainforest species, they're tropical species. These guys are found in, you know, I mean, you'll find Central American boas. So you have anywhere from, you know, into Southern Mexico, into South America, you find these guys. They're tropical, so you're gonna want, you know. Ours are probably usually around the 60% humidity point, and then when they're getting ready to shed, that's definitely bumped up to, you know, we bump it up closer to 80% and they always shed perfectly. So if you keep your temperatures right and you get those humidities taken care of properly, you're gonna have snakes that shed well, they're gonna eat well, they're gonna digest well, and they're just gonna be nice, super happy, healthy snakes. So speaking of eating and digesting and all that fun sort of stuff, so feeding is a big thing that if you're new into the hobby, you're new with boas, their feeding schedule and stuff like that is something that can you're gonna see a lot of different information about. So typically for a young baby boa, even up to you know potentially a year, two years old, eating an appropriate size meal once a week, just like pretty much any other snake. Um, so like Siggy here, she's she's probably about a year and a half old or so. She's still eating once a week, but I keep her meals slightly, slightly smaller so you don't want them to get fat. What you really want to do, which I'll take Siggy out in a minute to show. But just looking at Kevin, you want them to be slender to where you can see their muscle tone. You don't want the snake to sit here and be nice and big and round. If you actually look, he actually almost is kind of squared a little bit. And that's the sign of a healthy boa. Um, they're gonna have kind of like that little squared off appearance on their top there. All right, so I'm looking at a uh, kind of double fist in it here. So if you look at Siggy, same thing. You're gonna see how she's nice and square here on the sides. Oops, weirdo. And then you can even see that muscle definition going down her side here. So you, you always wanna make sure you're feeding the appropriate size to them. Um, you don't want them to overfeed because typically boas have an incredibly large, I don't know if large is the right word, but they have a very strong food response um, to where like this girl, even in blue, she has never, ever, ever missed a meal. Um, he's a little bit 
weirder with it, but an adult boa, they're gonna eat a lot less frequently. So to kind of go into it. So, you know, when they're young and all that, you're gonna, you don't necessarily have to go with the, the once a week, once every 10 days. Listen to your snake, look at your snake. So a snake like this, where she looks perfect, and if she's still eating every seven days, she's growing at a good rate, but she still looks nice and healthy. I'm gonna keep going at seven days. I'm not gonna up her food intake. I'm not gonna up her size. Now, of course, as they start to get larger, if it looks like they start to get a little bit chunky, or if they just start refusing food every seven days, then you adjust accordingly. So Kevin here, you'll see online, you know, they'll say an adult, oh, you know, feed him every two to three weeks or every three to four weeks. He doesn't even eat that much. He's only eating maybe every six weeks. He eats a jumbo rat, which is the right size for him. And I mean, he's just happy as a clam. He's still growing, he's still shedding. Um, so yeah, just, just listen to your snake, you know, follow, just start off eating them once a week, a decent sized meal. She gets small frozen rats, which are just, they're just the perfect size for her. She could take a medium rat down. Again, I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to push it. She's so pretty. So kind of going next, since I have both of these guys out here, kind of just talk about the difference real quick between a BCI, which is the common boa constrictor, and a BCC, which is considered the true red tail boa or boa constrictor constrictor. As you can very clearly see on her, that tail is just bonkers. Um, so that's the biggest way you'll see there's different boa morphs with the BCIs where they do have some pretty bold colored tails But these guys so just looking at them that tail is very very long and it's just got a very deep deep red to it For Kevin here. Yes, his tail is still long and there are you know little hints of red in there But that not really a whole lot. They've got very similar patterning um, But there's it's very different and even as adults, so these guys' tails just get more and more boldly colored as they age. Um, so that's one big way to tell. And then another way to typically tell is with their saddles, which are the, these patterns that are going down their spine here. Typically on the BCCs, um, they're going to be a much, a much more bold and defined. Oh, hello. <laughs> much more crisp, bold, and defined compared to on uh, the BCIs here, where a lot of times they can kind of look a little muddled. Kevin here, his are actually relatively defined, so that's not a good tell for him. But once you start seeing these snakes enough, you can actually start to, to pick up that difference pretty easily. But I am gonna go and put one of these guys back now to make my life easier. All right, so now it'll be a little bit easier only having a rainbow one snake instead of two. <laughs> um, so another just great thing about boas, you know, I know we're gonna jump around a little bit, but that's the normal GBL way is we're gonna jump around a little bit. Boas are such a common, popular snake for a lot of reasons. I mean, one, they're just gorgeous. Whether you get a BCI or a BCC like this, you know, BCI common boa like Kevin, I mean, just a, a normal one, it's like 150 bucks. Um, something like a Serenon, you know, they're in the four to five hundred dollar range. Um, but what's great about them is typically their demeanor is, as you've seen with Kevin and here with Siggy, they are just absolute sweetheart snakes. As babies, they can be a little feisty sometimes. This girl you would think was a spawn of Satan. Um, she was very hissy, very strikey. Um, we would just come into the room and you just. <sighs> One more time for the people. Um, it was pretty bad, but you know, so we got her, she was still pretty young, just wasn't handled a whole lot. Uh, we got her broken out of that pretty quick, and I mean, she's just, she's just as sweet as Kevin is, and this is your typical boa demeanor. They're typically just very, very chill snakes, um, don't mind being handled. Sometimes, you know, she's usually a little bit more chill than Kevin, she kind of will just usually just sit here. But yeah, they're just, they're such well-mannered snakes. They typically are ferocious eaters. They don't have any crazy habitat requirements as far as temperatures and humidities that make it difficult for, you know, someone who's not as experienced with snakes. Uh, biggest thing to keep in mind is these guys do get large. Um, a common boa like Kevin, so he's a male. He's 
pretty much full size. You know, he's right around six to seven foot. Females can and typically do get quite a bit larger. Um, they're gonna average typically seven or eight foot, maybe even a little closer to nine, um, but getting up plus to 10, 11 plus feet is not uncommon for them. BCCs on the other hand, typically they are a little bit on the larger side. Um, males are gonna kind of stay the same, right you know, six, seven foot, but the females getting nine to 10 foot is, is a lot more common. Um, so just, just thinking about that as a 10 foot snake with that freaking awesome red tail there. That would just be really freaking cool. So now habitat wise, because now we're gonna jump right into that. Good segue, right? Woo! Woo! Okay. So you know, you get a small one, you know, you're gonna to wanna to start in like a 40 gallon breeder, like from Exoterrazil or whatever. Or, you know, if you do PVC cages, like this, these black boxes here are great. So even there's no real rule of thumb for what size enclosure you need for a snake. All the, you know, a lot of the older, old school, they're looking at things, you know, just put them in a tub, they're good, they don't move around a lot, blah, 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 and that's a whole bunch of nonsense. You wanna look at your snake, look at your cage, and say to yourself, is there enough room that my snake can be active, explore, stretch, and be the animal it's meant to be? So, like, Siggy here, she's, you know, she's probably pushing four foot or so. Could she fit in a, still fit in this three foot cage here? She could but it would be a little bit on the smaller side. So that's why we actually have her down here, which we'll show you the inside here. This is a four foot by two foot by two foot. Um, you know, and it's got everything in there that she needs. Boas actually are a semi arboreal snake. So they actually do climb a little bit. Um, so that's why we have some of those branches in there. We've got a nice thick, you know, about that much of that, uh, the bioactive substrate that I made a few episodes ago. If y'all haven't checked that out, do it, it's a good way to make some substrate cheap. Um, so something like that's gonna be good, you know. She'll be good in this until she's probably pushing five to six foot. Then at that point, I'm gonna move her into an adult enclosure. So now like an adult enclosure, we'll come on over here to Kevin. This would be a little bit small for my liking for a big adult female. You can see, so for Kevin up here, this just works perfectly. This is five feet long, two and a half feet wide, six feet tall. So for, like I said, for a snake that's roughly six or seven foot, you know, like he, he loves life in here. He has all these climbing room. He can come up and be a snake. He comes up here, curls up, gets his warmth. He'll come back down to the floor where we have his hide. We have his big water dish. Um, so he has everything in here that he needs to really be a snake, have a reason to live, and just really enjoy his slither little snake life. Now for something like Siggy, or, you know, an adult female boa that's gonna get bigger, you know, I'd probably wanna do something maybe, maybe like a six foot by three foot by six foot. And even then, I'd probably even go bigger than that. I'd probably go like a six foot by four foot by six foot um, at the minimum. So these guys are very active snakes and they need all that room that they can move around. So just something else to consider. This is not a snake you should be putting in a tub or putting in a rack system. Um, or, you know, even putting in those bigger uh, PVC cages that are like 12 inches high that you'll see some people put big snakes in. That's just, that's not a way for a snake to live. These guys will absolutely use every square inch that you give them. And it's a lot more fun actually watching them use all of that space. Um, so always err on the side of bigger is always gonna be better. Are you okay, ma'am, sitting there doing something on the back of there behind the camera? Do I got a little piggy here recording me? Goodness gracious with this. Um, so yeah, so I guess next we can kind of talk a little bit about their growth rates. Um, boas are a somewhat fast snake as far as growth is concerned. They're not growing quite as fast as like what a, a reticulated python or a Burmese python is gonna grow. But so this girl is, you know, she's a year and a half. I mean, she's probably pushing close to two years old. Um, and she is this size. And now again, that's me feeding the way that I feed her. If I were to, you know, if I was giving her medium rats instead of small rats and things of that nature, odds are she'd probably be quite a bit bigger than this by now. But I'm not trying to get her big fast. I want her to grow slow, steady, and healthy. And that's gonna ensure that she lives the longest life possible. 
there's a lot of snakes out there that are just, they're just obese and they're just, you can just tell not very healthy. Um, and that leads to a shorter lifespan. There's no reason these guys can't live 30 plus years in captivity when they are kept correctly. Um, I know Tom Crutchfield down in Miami, he's got a, a is it a Peruvian? I, I think he's got a, a Peruvian um, that's, I think, well over 20 years old and I mean, still producing babies. So if that tells you anything about how when you keep them correctly and you feed them properly, just what their life can potentially be like. And I know a whole bunch of info just kind of being spat at you, but I want to make sure that we give, you know, the easiest, I shouldn't say easiest, I apologize, the most comprehensive guide so you can kind of get all your information in one spot. So to kind of touch everything top to bottom again, for babies and adults, you're going to want to give them a hot side, you know, basking spot of, you know, low 90s, 90, 93 degrees, kind of right in that ballpark, ambient temperature, high, high 70s into the low 80s, moderate to high humidity, you know, 60 to 80%. Um, you're going to want to make sure they've got plenty of room to move around in the cages, lots of different options to climb over and under and to hide in. For the substrate, I did say we use our bioactive substrate that we made. Another option is just cypress mulch. That works really well, or you can do different dirt mixtures. You just want to do stuff that's not going to mold and it's going to hold its moisture very well. So these guys can have their humidity. Feed them, you know, start off once a week when they're small and adjust as they grow and change your feeding schedule based on what the snake itself is actually looking like. Keep their cages nice and big. Treat these guys with respect, even though these guys are super gentle, sweet, awesome, amazing snakes that I would recommend these guys as a first snake over a ball python. Still big snake, can still do some damage. So you always gotta be very respectful of them. Uh, we talked about the difference between BCIs and BCCs. Of course, we got the super nice red tail. Whoa, what are you doing, girly? She is just going crazy on us. And we gotta take a picture for a thumbnail. Take a picture. Well, live action thumbnail. Look at that. You don't see that on all these other channels. Mm -mm, no, you don't. So y'all better subscribe so you can get more live action thumbnails like that. You can see the whole process. Everything start to finish. Um, but yeah, so boas, they're, they're awesome. Some of my favorite snakes. Uh, this girl here, you know, Suriname has been my dream snake since I was a kid, so I'm super grateful to, to have one, especially one as absolutely stunning and gorgeous as her. Thank you to my wonderful wife behind the camera who, you know, made it happen when we got her a while back. Um, but yeah, so of course I'd love to discuss with y'all if I miss something, if you guys do something a little bit differently than we do, um, drop in the comments below. So we always love having, you know, nice reptile discussions so we can all learn and grow together. Um, as always, please like, please subscribe if you haven't, because if you haven't subscribed, I would say I'd stick her on you, but you know, she's super sweet. Maybe we would get Angela, but she's hiding right now. That darn white lip is a freaking psychopath, man. Well, Becky's not. She, she wants to be included. We got, just got to show Becky. What a goofball of a sink. That actually just reminded me, when it comes to water dishes, Becky just reminded me. Always make sure that the water dish is big enough that the snake can submerge their whole body in. That's another thing that you're gonna see all the time is people say, oh, they don't need that. Oh, someone just farted. Um, you know, they don't need it big enough to soak in, they just need to drink, blah, 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 blah. Every single one of our snakes that they say that, so they say that about berms and retakes and everything. They all have big water dishes to soak in and every single one of them utilizes that. So even for these boas, yeah, make sure they've got a nice big water dish. That's also gonna help contribute to their humidity. But yeah, and anytime they want it, they can get in there and they can soak. Um, so yeah, so thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, post notifications on. It's what helps keep our lights on, even though we're not monetized, but it helps keep the lights on anyway. Um, so thank you all for watching. I know Siggy here likes stinky tooth. It's like a thing. And we'll see y'all next time. Oh, gbloguanas.com. <laughs> Buy some merch. Okay, bye.